Okay, this is not a normal vlog. Uh, this is a tutorial. I haven't done any vlogging today, but I've been promising to do some kind of vlog editing tutorial for a while. So, here we go, this is it. If you're not into video editing or technical talk, do not watch this video. I'm sorry for wasting your time. For everybody else, I hope this is useful. It's very basic stuff and it's my workflow that I do on an almost daily basis for my daily videos. All right, let's not mess around. Let's jump straight in there. First thing I've done is put my SD card in the computer and I've also got my hard drive, my external hard drive here where I catalog my footage. This is a new one, so I've only got a few logs in here. As you can see, I'm on episode 956. So let's get that footage off of that card here, drag it straight over, Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015, latest version I think. Okay, so here we go, this is Premiere, um, this is where, this is my layout that I like to have, and this is where my files are, this is, this is the canvas, everything you see with this blue cursor down here, you see up here, and this is your viewer, so if I was to double click on a clip, it ends up in here, and then I can go across and put the effects, which I keep down here. I have like a little folder of favorites, um, cross dissolves and constant gains, things that I use frequently that I keep in my favorites that I can just drag across. Let's get right into it. Command I, Command I to import, May, done. And then it will import. My computer is going to be especially slow during this because I'm also doing a screen recording. It's quite frustrating. So as you can see up here in the corner, um, in my project files here, I've got all of my vlogs, and maybe that's probably what's slowing it down as well a little bit. So I've got all my vlogs and all my projects in one, one, um, one project. We open up the folder here, double click, which brings it into the viewer. Hit spacebar. <laughs> So what I'm doing here is I'm just playing through the clip um, and I'm press pressing spacebar to play and then I'm pressing in, I for in. So I'm inning the clip there and then to go back to it I just press the up, up key. I press the up and down keys to navigate through cuts. So when I'm down here on the timeline I'm pressing up and then down and it's a surefire way of actually putting your, your cursor on the exact cuts. It's a nice fast way of navigating through. So I'm going to talk a lot about um, shortcuts uh, on the keyboard that I use all the time which speeds up my editing workflow. Right back into the viewer. I like this guy walking past so in, he's walking past, that person's walking past, here comes the train. That'll do. So O for out. Next thing, right click up here on the clip that you've just uh, selected in and out. New sequence from clip. Call it what you want the project to be called, the sequence. So now what it's done is created a nice new sequence down here with that clip. And the benefit of doing it that way rather than starting a new sequence and then adding the footage is that it matches the sequence settings to the clip exactly. So that's 25 frames per second, 1080p HD, um, and then you don't have to worry about faffing around with settings too much. So this is your, this is the start of your video that you're making. So let's see what else we got. We can scrub along here as well. So I quite like me picking up my bag there. Now what I'm doing there is when I've in and outed the footage, I hit comma and the comma key will put it down wherever the cursor is here. So if I hit comma now, it will cut between that clip and stick it in there. You see what I've done there? Let's undo that. But if I hit full stop, which is next to comma, it will lay it over the top. Comma will push everything along. Full stop will just lay it over the top. And I'm Command Z to undo those things. So I keep my cursor at the 
at the end of the clips, and then when I hit comma, it just lays them down like that. Obviously, you only want one of those. So that's a speedy way of going through a clip. So I'm just playing, playing the clip, and now I'm going to want from here onto the train, out, comma, lay it on the track. And that's pretty much what I do with all of the clips. So next thing is there's a couple of nice clips of the journey, out, lay it down. So that's the basics of how I get the clips down. I will literally go through all of these clips, pull out the bits that I want and lay them onto the track, onto the sequence down here. And that is the first step. So I'm just gonna get on with that right now. Okay, all the footage has been laid down. I think that took me, I don't know, 45 minutes, something like that. It usually is pretty quick, and now what I'm doing is I'm going to stick on the on the sequence here. So we've got all these raw clips, and I've just literally taken all the best bits and kind of half built a story on the timeline. So all I'm going to do now is go through the whole lot again and trim and try and cut as much of the crap out as possible because we want to make this vlog a bit shorter. As you can see over here at the minute, it's 11 minutes. Sometimes after I've laid all my footage down, especially with drone stuff and GoPro stuff and slow-mo stuff, I can end up with something like half an hour or even 40 minutes worth of footage that I need to get down to 10 minutes, around 10 minutes. So yeah, trimming the crap is really fun though because you can, I'm just using plus and minus here to like zoom in and out of the timeline. Um, it's another nice keyboard shortcut and a lot now I'm going to be using the up and down keys and also left and right so you can go frame by frame backwards is left and forwards is right and those keys those arrow keys are going to be your friend in speeding up your editing process another two keys that are really important right now I'm going to press spacebar to play I want to cut it there but instead of going C for cut and then cutting it and then V for the arrow thing and then selecting and then deleting and then selecting and then deleting. What you can do is really quickly just press W, boom, and it will cut everything that's to the right up to the next clip. So I've planned it through, I want it to cut about there and you don't even have to press space, you can just cut it, so you just go boom like that, play it back, space, cut, W, W, and if you want to go the other way, say I think that's a bit long, let's use the arrow keys to select the frame, and I press Q, which is right next to W, to, to delete everything on the left hand side, behind the cursor. That's a really useful one. From there, everything left, I want to delete up to the last cut, Q. So that's all I'm going to do right now. Okay, I've trimmed as much as I can. I've also selected an outtake. that will be a nice little bonus feature at the end. And right at the end, I'm just going to skip through and listen to when I click my fingers. And the cool thing to do is these clips um, with their audios on the bottom, video on the top, and they are linked. So you can either press Command U and unlink them and do that, um, or you can just hold down Alt and adjust one at a time. And then when you let go of Alt, they're still connected. That's a really useful one. So I find when the click is hold down ALT and bring the video back so that the video stops and the audio carries on on the click like that and then one, two, three, four, five frames later I go to the yesterday's vlog select my outro command C to copy move this command V to paste and grab that little Mr. Ben Brown thing there replace the outro and then go to yesterday's vlog, select a clip that I'm going to use, copy, paste, 
and then you see here this clip here I'm not going to go into great detail but this clip here is what goes into my computer screen and it's got a load of settings to make it that size so all I can do right now what I can do right now is go command C and copy but instead of command V to paste what I do is I select these clips and I go alt command paste and then it pastes the attributes so now these clips have the same attributes as that now I delete and I put these in the right place and then that is my outro done so like this flight is mostly going to be this <laughs> okay so now I've got a 9 minutes 9 second vlog and that is a good length of time for a vlog in my eyes everything seems to be relatively interesting in it so what I'm going to go and do now is lay some music underneath and I'm going to make the music loud um, when I want it to be loud and I'm going to make it quiet when I'm speaking and maybe do a few more little trims and cuts in between um, and then that's it pretty much Okay, I've found my track that I want to use. It is Daybreak by Electric Mantis. Great tracks. And then I literally drag it straight from the finder down onto the audio track down here. And the first thing I do is zoom in. And by scrolling upwards with two fingers on this area here, I can expand the track to see the waveforms here. So already you can see where the track kind of drops, where it's chilled. First things first, Command L. Now this is a shortcut. This is a custom shortcut that I have made to to bring up the audio gain of a track, command L. You can set it to whatever you want, as with all these other shortcuts. And then I usually bring it down to about minus three or my, between minus three and five, just to stop it from peaking, because a lot of these audio tracks are like quite loud. Another useful tip, if you press S here, it solos each of the tracks, so you can press play and just listen to only the music. And then if you want to hear it with the train. Now the train has quite nice noises. There's a bit of audio. There's like an announcement going on. So I like that, but it's too loud for the music. So what I'm going to do is command L that, bring it down by like eight or so. And it's all just a feel thing. So you have a little listen. also very loud so I'm just going to stick to the track right now and I'm going to find where it drops here kind of a pre-drop there and I'm going to find it by going left and right and then listening for that bass there now if I select the track and press M it puts a little marker so I know on the cursor it will you can snap it to that so it will actually, the snap will detect that marker and you, can, you know that it's going to start on the beat there. That's getting a little bit advanced, so I'm not going to go too into much detail about audio. And then you must just cut the, uh, cut the visuals to the audio, like this. Okay, I found where I want my beat to kind of drop and it kind of comes in once the trains are moving, like this. which is nice. What I want to do here is cut the visuals to the audio beat and it's not always a nice cut on the beat but more often than not on the beat works nicely. So if I press Q and W which cuts um, left and right on the on the timeline it's gonna also cut the audio down here. Now to stop that you select this or we'll turn that off, turn that off if I want it to cut it on the beat here, so I want to cut it here where it goes. If I deselect these two like that, when I press W, it will cut this here without cutting this audio track. So you don't have to worry about that down there. And you can just focus on cutting to the beat. Cut. Cut. That cuts a bit early. So what I'm going to do here is hit N. Now N selects the cut there and then you can drag that to your cursor and what it will do is just match it up nicely. That's 
perfect time. Sometimes it just comes out really nice timing without having to work too hard for it. I'm going to do a bit of editing now. Here's another really nice shortcut. I know that down here, this is the start of the beat, right? So, if I want to duplicate that, all I have to do is click on it, hold down Alt and drag it, and it will duplicate it. It's so, so useful, that one. It took me ages to work that one out. This is what happens when you don't go to film school. A minute and 15 seconds into the vlog, this is when I introduce myself, so what we're doing here. When I pull these constant gains onto the audio, all it does is put transitions smoothly between the levels on one and the levels on the next. So I'm talking, so the music level needs to come down. So Command L, and I'm going to bring this down to about minus 20 dB, which is usually about right. Every song is different. I'm also going to put a constant gain on the audio from the video. Sometimes what I like to do is put a constant gain on the end of the track there and just drag it out. So what that does is it means it goes quiet over a longer period of time, just fades out and people forget that there was other music there. And then boom, straight back in with the music. So like this. Let's turn this down. Minus 10-ish. Want a little bit of ambient track in there, but not too much. It's going to be a really long tutorial, I'm sorry guys. Okay, time lapses. So this is about a five minute time lapse condensed into like, I don't know, looking like 10 seconds, something like that. The way I make it blurry, and this is a secret that I'm going to give away, because a lot of people ask. A lot of people know, but the way I make it blurry and not too rigid is by right click on the clip that you sped up, time interpolation, and then select frame blending. And yeah, it basically blends the frames and you get a really nice um, blurry looking time lapse. So what you'll also notice right now is although I've been through the whole thing once already and trimmed it down, um, as I go through the, all the clips again and kind of see the story coming about, I start to pick up a bit more of a faster pace and start to cut things a bit more ruthlessly. So already we've cut like, um, I don't know, 30 seconds or so out of the vlog and it just keeps the pace high, keeps the interest up. Okay, action sequences. Normally, this vlog will take a lot longer to edit when I've got GoPro footage or drone footage because I kind of make a little bit of a mini visual vibes inside the vlogs. Um, this is kind of a little bit action-y, just like the intro with all the trains. So the music's going to be higher and more emphasis on um, telling a little visual story. And as you can see over these clips here, um, there's not a lot of talking. Alright, so that's pretty much it. It's a very this one was a very simple vlog to put together. It's come down to just under eight minutes, which is a nice time. Some people enjoy long vlogs. I don't mind long vlogs, but I'd rather it be snappy. One last thing I do, I take an adjustment layer and I paste it over the top to give it a little bit of a graded look, which I really like. An adjustment layer is an invisible layer over the top which affects anything that's below it and I've just added a little something something to it to make things look a little bit more cinematic which I really like. Just go in the end here, make sure it's all lined up and then Command M after I've saved it of course 
and I have a custom YouTube fast export which is a bit of a compromise between keeping the file size a little bit lower but maintaining quality and I just have it frame rate matches always match the frame rate that you've shot the footage in and always um, I have it at 1080 HD and yeah if I'm honest like I don't know what half of this stuff means I never went to film school it just works for me and I've experimented with many many different types of exporting and I think that's the only way to really go so don't be afraid to mess around have a couple of different exports look at them next to each other and see what you like my target bitrate is like, is like 12.4 megabytes per second but seeing as this is coming out at about 700 megabytes I'm going to bump that up a little bit to 15 because anything around a gigabyte is usable and then hit export and then you wait for a long time alright that edit took me about an hour and 37 minutes and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, I hope it was useful, it wasn't super in depth but I think there's enough information there to get people off the ground with the editing a little bit and a few little t tricks and tips that took me a long time to figure out that I think are going to speed up your edits. I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial, um, as I say I have not studied this, this is everything that I've learned over the last four years or so and everything has been very specifically built around making fast edits as good as possible, um, editing every single day. I go into a lot more detail with my edits when I'm doing visual vibes and things like drone footage with 4K footage um, with a bit of motion zooming in and out of it and things like that. So this was this is a very basic edit. Some of my daily vlogs take up to six hours to edit. This one much speedier, less than two, which is a nice little bonus. But if you're gonna ask me how do I get better at editing? Make videos. I saw a really nice thing recently that said, um, be bad until you're good and be good until you're great. And that's exactly how everybody that's good at stuff gets there, which is why I continue to make daily videos because I want to be great at it. And there's only one way to do that, just by getting on with it. Don't forget to um, actually check out the vlog that I edited. I will link that in the top line of the description of this tutorial. Um, and I will check you guys soon. See you later. Are you going to oh, For a week before ben, VidCon, ben, we're going to come and live in Venice ben, with you. Surf. <laughs> Are you going to come live in Venice? Yeah. We're going to go surf. You can go, Nicole's going to teach you how to surf. No.